one. Uh, as is, is abundantly clear, we have not been having in-person events because of the virus, because of the pandemic. And so um, we, were, we thought that for our first one, we could actually talk about a subject near and dear to all of our hearts, which is travel. And what, in fact, travel and various aspects of it might look like once we're able to resume and uh, once we're able to go near and far and stay in hotels and fly in planes and visit other countries. Um, I think like, like many of us, I, um, I am itching to get out of town somewhere, hopefully out of the country. Um, but for the, for the time being, we of course have been uh, doing our traveling at home. So I, the, the theatrics in me decided that I was going to show you how I've been traveling. So I have in front of me, one of my favorite spirits. It happens to be some Arak, the national drink of Lebanon, also known as Rocky, also known as Uzo. So I'm gonna put a little ice in here and then continue to put a little water in it to make it turn its wonderful white color. And voila, this is how I have been traveling with food and drink. So we have this now, but now I'd like to talk about how, what's going to happen in the future. So what can we look forward to? What can we look forward to in planning? What can we look forward to in logistics? What can we look forward to once we get to a new place? And um, as much as, as obviously there are going to be changes and some of those might be negative, I, I really hope we can also find some positives in, hey, what are, what are some new wonderful things we can expect, changes that'll be made given the changes that So Dilek will now uh, introduce our panel. Thank you, Jill. Um, uh, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, this meeting is recorded. If you have an issue or problem with that, please let me know now because um, we'll keep this recording on our website or we'll distribute it or share it with our other members. So that's first. Um, thank you for being here, for joining us and for supporting our society. Without you, there's um, no events, there are no events and this is our personal connection at this point. So we have three representatives from the hot industries. Um, we have Giovanna Chiti. She is with Discover My Italy, and she is a native. Um, okay, one other little thing before I move on. Um, if you could mute yourselves, that would be great. Um, let's pause for a second. Thank you. Um, yes, Mr. Nixon. If the administrator will mute everybody, okay. people can individually speak by pushing the space <laughs> button, and that will allow an individual to speak, and you don't get any of the background noise. I'll do that. Um, if I mute everybody, I may not be on mute, so be aware of that. It did happen before, so I'm going to mute all. Does this allow me to talk to you? Yes, you can talk. I press the space button and it works. Perfect. Um, thank you for that. And um, I will continue. Um, Giovanna Kitty again with Discover My Italy. She is a native of Italy. So she will talk about the travel industry from her, um, per, with her perspective. Um, and I'll go a little bit more about details, who they are and how they came about. And um, they graciously accepted our invitation. Nancy uh, Barag, she is uh, it with the, um, she's the director of uh, sales and marketing with Inn at Penn, which is a Hilton um, group hotel at the University of Pennsylvania. Um, Alan Jackson um, is a flight attendant with a uh, long career uh, track, uh, and he plans to stay in this industry for a little bit longer. So um, tonight's format will be uh, questions. Um, we can also have our conversations. I'm not gonna ask you to hold your questions, but we will try to cover as many as we can. And um, Amy Shalansky tonight will be our moderator. She personally knows Nancy and Ellen, and Giovanna also knows Nancy because they did travel to Italy together. So um, 
Giovanna's travel career um, began about 30 years ago with TWA in um, Milan, and um, she co-founded Caravella um, Italy, focusing on boutique tours to Italy. And um, she followed her passion, and she wanted to create her own um, Discover My Italy uh, travel agency, we could call it, but it's more than that because she puts her heart and soul in it. And I've met people who traveled with her. There's nothing but wonderful things. Yes, Nancy being one of them, wonderful things about that. Uh, those travels, those trips, she really creates very, um, uh, creative is not even the word. I mean, she really goes deep and, um, in places not everybody would know or would would be able to discover because she knows all about it. Um, and she has three now grown up sons and they also share her passion um, and they travel together. I met them, they're very cool kids. Um, Nancy, again, she is with the Inn at Penn and again, long track record with hospitality industry with Sheraton Hotels, with um, Aramark in Cityline, um, Stratford, and um, there are quite a few. I'm sure I'm missing some. And um, Balvi in Stratford, sorry. She's from Omaha, Nebraska. And um, she and her late husband, Mark, raised two daughters. And Nancy now lives in East Falls um, in our neighborhood, pretty much. And um, Alan, Jackson, he started his career um, quite a few years ago, in 1995, I believe, correct, Ellen? <laughs> and uh, with American West Airlines. And in 2014, he moved to Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, he's been in Philadelphia since then, and he plans to keep Philadelphia as his home base until he retires. Um, so I'm sure there will be more personal stories, your journey that you would be willing to share with us tonight. So without further ado, um, please, Amy Shalansky, she's also a board member of the Geographical Society. She will be the moderator tonight. You can, okay, let me unmute you, um, Amy. I think you're good to go. I'm unmuted, okay. Yeah. So um, I'm going to start with the questions that I think that would apply to everybody, to Alan, who's a flight attendant with American Airlines, Nancy with the hotel, and Giovanna. So Nancy, um, before we started this, said, you know, her, her hotel has been open. And Alan, I know that you've been flying, and that's through the whole thing. So Giovanna, I think you're the person who's probably... Um, been stuck at home more than than they have as far as this is concerned I mean have you had people booking trips or when would you see starting doing anything like that again with with foreign travel yeah um, we were all everybody in the travel industry especially doing tours of Europe were prepared to have a phenomenal year 2020 we were just geared up a lot of bookings and then everything happened, so it was an immediate halt for travel to, to Europe. Also consider that Europe, Italy in particular, started the crisis much earlier than us here. Um, so the decision was really pretty easy for the spring travelers to move their departures to spring of the following year. Uh, some people have moved their departures in fall uh, and they are now waiting to see what will happen. I have to say, uh, I'm very, very connected to Italy. I spend half my year in Italy and half here in Philadelphia. And just today, I wanted to be sure to just get the last minute news from Italy. And I was talking to my guides in, uh, in Rome and Florence. And in Italy, things are really starting to pick up. Uh, actually, if we could be there, it would be a fantastic time. Because today, tomorrow morning, you, we could go to the Sistine Chapel, which usually is millions of people and you could be there by yourself. So there is really a sense of starting, things are opening. Um, so the problem now for US citizens is, can we travel there? It's right. not so much 
the country is doing well. I have, my mother is in Milan, so I talk to my mom every day. And now my mom who has been locked down in Milan for two months. And when we say locked down in Milan or in Italy in general, was not as light as here, stay at home, but you can go out for a walk. In Italy was two months of really being at home and you could only go out with a certificate to go to the supermarket. So it was very strong, very strong impact. But now people are going out, uh, the cafes, you can go to the cafes in Italy. Obviously you don't sit inside, but you know, the beautiful outdoors cafe. So there is really a sense that things are starting. The museums are pretty much the big, the known, the big museums are open, the cafes are open, the trains are going, but obviously there are a lot of precautions. The mask is mandatory in Italy. And even if you would do a tour in Italy, let's say of the Uffizi Gallery in Florence, they would limit the size to a maximum of 10. And right now, who is really enjoying in Italy are the Italians. So the tourism is local Italians that are maybe now falling back, <laughs> excuse me, they're following, falling back in love with their own country because... Are they letting anyway. people in from other countries in Europe? Well, now just last week, the EU borders have opened. So, um, yes, so, and you know, the nice thing in Europe is also that a lot of Europeans uh, can drive, even somebody from Belgium can drive to Italy and rent a villa in Tuscany. So there is a lot of that. Right. Uh, so, so the European communities are opening and starting to travel. So Alan, I know you've been flying through this whole entire thing, is that correct? You need to, un we need to unmute you. <laughs> yes, hold on. Uh, still muted. Yes, I think I can hear. I can't. No. No. No, I still see the mute symbol. There we go. Okay. So <laughs> you've been yes, flying sir. through the entire pandemic through all of it, right? Correct. With the exception of this month alone, I took a leave of absence. Oh, okay. Any particular reason this month or just? Uh, just just a break. Um, first time in 25 years, I just wanted to take a kind of a break from everything. So what were the airlines doing in the early days of, of this? I mean, people had to get home. They were, I mean, I know my own family, a uh, nephew was stuck in Florida and he finally went home. But yeah, in, in the early days when it just started, there really was, it was kind of chaotic. Um, it wasn't really much the airlines were doing at all compared to what they're doing now. Um, you know, the planes are filling up, so they are trying to, you know, keep the middle seats open. Um, but the, the airlines are just bleeding so much money that they've cut the schedule so much that the planes are getting very full. As an example, from Philly to Miami, we used to have 10 flights a day. Well, we're down to three. So those planes fill up. So Are you see them adding flights or starting to think yes. about adding flights? Actually, actually, on July 1st, they're adding a lot of frequency back. They're bringing airplanes. We're bringing 142 aircraft that are parked right now back into the fleet. And what, so, sort, of, what sort of protocols do, do they have in place and have they had in place for, you know, containing the virus? Well, they, we have enhanced the cleaning. So when the plane comes in and it's deplaned of passengers, there's a crew of at least 10 or 12 cleaners that come in that do a thorough cleaning that they never used to do except on an overnight. They clean and disinfect all the armrests, seat buckles, tray tables, um, the uh, overhead bins, the window shades, um, a he what we call a heavy duty cleaning that they would normally only do realistically maybe every few weeks. Are but, uh, people required to wear masks on the flights? They, they are, but uh, there are a fair number of people that do not. And we, as flight attendants, cannot enforce it. Oh, okay. So, what airline is it? American Airlines. Yeah. Um, so you, it can get a little testy with other f passengers. You know, I mean, if there are people around them don't have a mask on, we try to relocate them. 
Um, but as the planes fill up, it's getting hard to do that. But I mean, 95% of the people wear the mask. Okay, well that's, that's a good thing. Um, so are the, all the flights that an American is flying now, are they all domestic flights? Yes, Philly is, Philadelphia is the gateway to our European destinations. We fly to 24 cities in Europe. Mm -hmm. All our wide body airplanes have been grounded. There are zero flights to Europe right now. Uh, starting in July, we're bringing three destinations back, Amsterdam, Zurich, and London. Um, we are opening up a lot of new cities this summer for summer travel, like Morocco, Reykjavik, Iceland, uh, and they've all been put on hold till next year. Uh, I think we're adding two more cities. We're bringing Rome back, but that won't be till October, and Manchester, England, and Dublin in October. So it, we have a long road to come back. Um, right. I mean, we used to fly to 24 cities in Europe. Now we're, we'll be up to only three starting July. So, so it's going to be a long road. Yeah, what about places like Mexico, South America? South kind America? Yeah, well, that's the, those are all flying out, flown out of Miami, and most of South America was on lockdown. It's slowly coming back. We're starting uh, Sao Paulo, uh, Santiago, uh, Lima. Uh, those cities are all slowly coming back now. Um, the Caribbean has really never been closed. It's been wide open, Mexico. Um, but um, it, it's 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 going to be a long road for the airlines to recover from. Right. So what, for, as far as you're concerned in your job, I mean, um, do you feel, have you felt safe traveling? Yes, I, I feel because we don't, basically for the passenger, there's really very little contact with the crew. And like for myself, I, I feel safer on the plane than the grocery store <laughs> because we, we don't do any service. You have to bring everything yourself. Um, now what we've done is the passenger when they board they grab a little like a snack sack and it has water in there and and you know snacks so there's really no contact between passengers and the flight crew oh interesting so have there been you know you said you know you have no power to enforce or in masks i mean have passengers by and large behaved themselves <laughs> yeah there's been but by and large, yes. There's been a few instances where, you know, the, like I said, as the planes fill up, um, some of the passengers get a little nervous, you know, and if someone sitting beside them doesn't have a mask on and they're in the middle seat, we right. try to relocate them, but it's getting harder and harder because, you know, these planes, these, because they've cut the schedules down so much that the planes are getting pretty occupied. Uh, they're getting a high, high load factor. We have a question from Jack. Yes. Go ahead. Are most of your passengers business or are they start, starting to travel now for uh, pleasure and tourism? Or well, when all, when, all this, when all this happened, all our frequent flyers, which we call Executive Platinum, they're the businessmen, all their companies withdrew them. So they are not, none of them were flying. Um, and the ones that were flying were tourists or people that had to get essential workers. Now, in the last few weeks, I've seen the frequent flyers slowly coming back, the business traveler. So it is slowly recovering um, as far as the businessman traveler. But by majority, most of them are uh, the uh, leisure traveler. And a lot of that has to do with the price of the ticket. It's the airlines are just filling up seats, so they're really reducing the ticket prices just for yeah, income. Right. I mean, I've, I've seen some really ridiculously low prices. Miami to Los Angeles for sixteen dollars. Oh so yes. how that yeah, may so be a price advertised for Miami to Los Angeles, but by the time you put a lot of add-ons to it for this and that and something else, it's not a sixteen-dollar ticket. And that's well, not to like to advertise it as such. Yeah, well, that's what we call our basic economy. Um, and actually, the only thing you would pay is a carry-on. I mean, I've checked luggage, $25. So that's why the planes were filling up. So what happened to, I mean, so since there are so many fewer flights, uh, that's fewer people working, you know, fewer flight attendants like you, what, 
what are the airlines doing for the people that are basically not working? I mean, are they getting paid? How, how's that? Being yes, paid? because the airlines took that $25 billion CARES bailout. Uh, and as, as an example, Philadelphia has 2,400 flight attendants. There's only enough flying for 800. Wow. So there's 1,600 too many because they grounded all the wide body aircraft. So basically they're paying us to, to stay home. So I'm t I took a leave for June and I'm getting paid 75 hours to sit, sit at home. Wow. Um, but come however, come October when the CARES Act expires, then the airlines can cut staffing or go, go to the unions for pay cuts. Got it. Because the, the, air, the industry is just not gonna rebound that quickly. It's, right. it's gonna be probably a couple of years. Well, um, Nancy, so this affects you, obviously. <laughs> yeah, so the, the predictions, um, at least domestically, are that business and leisure um, individual travelers will, leisure will come back first, followed by business, and then followed by group. And a lot of the estimates were saying one and a half to two years. Now some of the estimates are saying for the hospitality industry to rebut the travel business and hospitality, 10 years. 10 years, wow. What, I mean, your no. hotel's been open the whole time. I mean, have you, how many guests have you had? <laughs> well, the reality is we probably, financially we should not have been open. Um, we're running in the low teens in occupancy, um, but we are owned by Penn and Penn is not, um, you know, they totally support us. They want us to stay open. Um, they own the Sheraton also at the at the um, Chestnut Street. Um, so it's been, I mean, all of our business in basically it started for us. It started in February because we had um, some Chinese groups who were coming to take classes at Wharton. And as soon as this all started in China, they those groups all canceled out, and then it just was a it just rolled. From, from then on. And by March, uh, I think it was 13th, is that somewhere around there when basically we all put in lockdown, um, every, single, every single group and every single customer we had basically canceled. Wow. So do you and, have, when, are, when do you have things on the books? When do you see things happening? When, when do you have groups scheduled? Well, for us, a lot of our group business in, Basically, everything through July is canceled. Um, we're waiting to find out what the University of Pennsylvania is going to do about their fall semester. If they, they, I don't know if anybody had seen this, but they put out four different scenarios that they were looking at in order to um, start the school year. One of which is total virtual learning and no classes on campus. If that happens, we will lose every higher education um, class that is either already booked or waiting to see what Penn says before they can sign a contract. Um, we have a couple of weddings that are, I have a wedding in, in August that really wants to get married, but depends on um, what the governor says, how many people they can have. And they might, um, they might switch their reception to next year, or they might just go where it's green and they can have 100 people which would not be in Philadelphia. Right. So um, basically, other than, I mean, we just don't know yet. We, we're sitting on about three or four groups in the fall that are tied to Penn, and if they cancel, if Penn says no groups on campus, then they're all gonna cancel as well. So it's, it's been a very, um, it's been very difficult. It's, you know, millions and millions of dollars not just in group, but then you add the, all the business travel. And Penn's graduation, right. um, you know, that's a, that's a big one. Um, and now they've rescheduled this year's graduation for next May, the week after May 21's graduation. But it won't be like it is this year, uh, like it would have been. So like Giovanna said, we were poised to have an amazing 2020 year. We had a really good 2019 and 2020 was looking even better. And then, then it all fell apart. Yeah, Alan, let me ask you a question. I know that um, we can't, as, you know, US citizens can't travel 
to a lot of places, they won't let us in. Are they allowing flights in from other countries other than, like you said, Mexico and the Caribbean, that you know of? There, there are. You there need are. to unmute. Yeah, I'm not able to unmute for some reason. There you oh. go. Thank okay. You. okay. Uh, yes, we are flying to Canada. However, that's kind of strange because I'm I am Canadian, and I'd like to go home and visit my mother. Oh, but right. the Canadian the Canadian border is closed, except right. for essential travel, um, and leisure travel, of course, not essential. So, but we are running flights to Vancouver, Canada, Toronto, and Calgary. Um, so I'm not sure how that what those flights look like when the border is actually closed. Yeah, I don't know. But, how there, but yeah, and we fly to Mexico City and all, all the, a lot of Mexico cities we fly to, Mexican cities. There are some other international destinations that are picking up, um, that are now are coming back, I think in July. I don't remember which ones, but because um, I sit, I sit on a call with the Convention Bureau once every other week and they give us that update. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know I, have, I, was, I was talking to a friend today who um, she and her husband go up to Nova Scotia every summer sailing and their boat is there and uh, they can't go, you know, they, they will not let them in right. at all. So I, I don't know how many other countries won't, you know, won't let us in, borders are closed. So I didn't know whether people were allowed to come in here from elsewhere. Is that, I guess that's a state by state decision held by the governors rather no. than... I don't think it's state by state. You don't. Okay. Um, I don't know how that works because if, if one state's green and another's on lockdown, what is that? I mean, so is there a federal ruling of where people can come from? Does anybody know that? Giovanna, you let me unmute or you unmute. Okay. I can't. Is that me? You need to unmute. I, I, yes. I was saying I don't think they can do it state by state because it would be just so be crazy. Yeah. So crazy. And plus most of the time people come in, let's say from Europe through JFK, through the East Coast, and they make a connection. So it's really country by country. Right. And um, Okay. Yeah, I just was curious whether people could come here. So um, you know, it sounds like things are getting better for the airlines, Alan, do you think? Yes. Yes, okay. Yeah, they're slowly, I mean, we're still bleeding 50 billion, 50 million a day, wow. 1.5 billion a month, but they're trying to, uh, you know, stop the hemorrhaging as much as they can. Um, but yeah, we, it's, there is, there is, you see a glimmer of hope there, the, you know, people are starting to come back. So, you know, yeah. So does the, this, air, the yeah. airlines ha the airlines have to have a seventy percent load factor, which means seventy percent of each flight that goes off takes off and lands has to have seventy percent full capacity just to break even. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the, the cost yeah. is pretty high. Right. I have I, a question. Um, how do you think the airline companies will start a competition? You know, they've been going after their frequent flyers. They offer extra mileage. And, you know, how will that play out? Yeah, I think it's it's because it's mostly going to be domestic because the international is not coming back for a while. Um, it's just going to be on service. And, you know, I, I, I think Delta is probably at the top there. They always were one of the best domestic carriers for service, uh, on-time performance, uh, passenger complaints, lost baggage, cleanliness, friendliness. Um, so that's where I think they will try to have to win the passengers over domestically. You know, Jill has a question. I have a question, um, and I really like. Thanks, Jack. I like the space bar speaking thing. I didn't know about that. Good one. Um, but yeah. so. Um, I want to know, you know, I'm, I'm really raring to go and I want to know, you know, what, what special, what, what is special that's being created by this pandemic for, you know, are there, I don't want to call them deals, but are there deals either in Italy or in the, the hospital, you know, at hotels? Like what, what can we start thinking and saying, hey, we should try doing this. It's something I could never have done before. I, I do not know if this is true, but just last night, a friend 
of mine uh, from uh, California, whose husband is Sicilian, sent me a text. And, and again, this is, I'm not, I did not verify the saying that Sicily is going to offer uh, to pay part of the airline ticket for people to come. So I do not know if uh, that's, uh, if that's is really that happening. Of, uh, is that the type of thing we should start looking for though? Like cities and, and, and provinces saying, hey, we need you back, so here, let me help? Yeah, well, obviously, you know, now I, th I think what's happening, at least in Europe, and I'm talking specifically about Italy, is that they're waiting to see what are the rules for outside of the EU. So right now, even myself, as an Italian who resides abroad, I cannot really go to it. I can only if I have really a reason. You know, my mom is sick, I can go. So there is supposed to be a decree coming out around June 15 so that we have rules. Once it's clear who can come and what can happen, I think that a lot of regions or a lot of hotels will start giving specials, you know, to try to find marketing to make people come. Because I think for a lot of people, just the idea of being on a on a plane is, you know, it's not so appealing, but maybe Miami is only two hours while going to Europe is eight, 10 hours and it becomes a little bit bigger. And the big questions for people traveling to Europe is, okay, I can fly to Europe. What happens once you're there? Because if I go home and I'm quarantined, okay, I stay home. But for a, for a tourist to go and spend two weeks in a hotel, even if it's a beautiful hotel, like it doesn't make any sense. Although just today I was talking with somebody that does villas in Europe and she has clients that had booked a villa in Sweden. They are required to quarantine, but they decided to go and to be in this beautiful villa and do it. So then everybody does it a little bit different. I thought that was kind of So I think for the foreseeable future, if you want to travel, People, you'll, you'll want to think domestic. Um, you'll want to think drive, places you can drive. Within Hilton, the, the, um, the hotels that are, have seen a big jump already have been the hotels in resort destinations where people can go to the beaches. Um, but, you know, inner city hotels, I mean, you can get some great deals, but, you know, you have to make sure the city is, you have to make sure you're comfortable you know, going to restaurants if they're even open, if museums are open. Um, but domestic is definitely, um, I think that's, that's gonna be, I think we should all think about trying to support the American economy as best we can. And we have lots of great deals at the Inn of Penn. So, you know, if you know anybody coming in, um, our, our, our rates have never been as low as they are now. Who are the people staying at the Inn of Penn now? Um, well, right now, for the last last week and this week, a lot of the parents of kids who never got to unpack their dorms, they've all been given they've they've all been assigned dates and times to come back. Um, I think that will start to drop off after this week. Um, and then we actually have partnered with uh, the Ronald McDonald House because they were not allowed to bring in um, any new families. So as families left, they couldn't bring in new families whose children had to be in the hospital. So we, we're we taking care of a lot of those uh, families. Um, and then some medical people, but that didn't even, Penn didn't even actually need the volume of rooms for their um, employees that they thought they would. So other than that, it's, you know, they're, Business is not traveling at this point. Companies are are putting holds. You know, people they're being they're telling their their executives who have to travel that they have to get permission from a higher up to even book a business trip at this point. And I have to say, unfortunately, um, if you look and if you you know if you watch the news and you see that a lot of the cities that really opened up Memorial Weekend they're now they're now showing signs of spiking, and then 
in another two weeks, we'll see what happened as a result of the um, all the protests. Um, and that's going to be very upsetting if cases start to spike and then they put cities back in lockdown again. That's just going to prolong everything. I gather that for uh, traveling around the U.S. interstate, that uh, when Yellowstone opened up, that there was a major crowd around there trying to get in. Oh, yeah. In any case, I want to be positive because I think the desire, even though it's very difficult now, and I feel that as well, but I think the desire in many people to explore, to travel, it's still there. So I, I want to be positive, and I think there will be people that will stay home, obviously, but I think some people that have that, that are more adventurous will always want to, uh, to travel. And again, maybe there will be some great deals. And right now it's safer when you are, unfortunately it's difficult for us to get out, but it's becoming safer to be out of here because the other countries are already out. You know, the numbers in Rome is, uh, you know, 20 people, you know, like, so it's almost to zero, Sicily zero. So, um, and, and it's important to keep up the spirit. That, oh, no question. You know, that is. Uh, it's going to end. There's going to be an end to this eventually. Yeah. Right, but it could and hurt. And when it does, and when it does, businesses, you know, there's going to be a lot of uh, pent up demand, which will be great. It's just a question of when, and as you say, the, the question of whether there are going to be spikes again, and, then, and they've seen them in Arizona and, you know, some other places that have opened up. So, you know, I think people are still cautious, at least people I know are still cautious. Um, Nancy, question for you. I mean, what in the hotel, because you've had so few people, um, what about the employees there? Are they being taken care of or what's going on with that? Well, like, like every business, um, we unfortunately had to make some hard decisions. You can't keep a full staff when you're running 10, 12, 13% occupancy. So, um, you know, we had to furlough a lot of managers um, and we're kind of running with a, you know, bare minimum because you just, it's what you have to do. Um, Penn, I have to say, was very gracious for any hourly employee that was furloughed or that was furloughed. Uh, they were allowed to apply. Penn was was what gave them a set amount of gave our employees each um, some money, which was very nice of them. Um, and actually, the Greater Philadelphia Hotel Association is giving all hourly employees of all the hotels, whether they're open or or suspended, um, hundred dollar gift uh, Walmart gift card, which they just started doing today or yesterday. Um, so, you know, we're, we keep in touch with our employees. Um, I try to do a, a Zoom call with my team because I have a team that I had to furlough. I try to, we try to do a cocktail hour about once every other week just to touch base, stay in touch. Um, so, you know, but we just don't know. And I have a couple of salespeople that, you know, I've, they're limited to the number of days that they, that I can have them working. So it's, you know, it affects everybody. But um, we're, you know, we're doing our best to take care of them um, as much as we can. Yeah. So Giovanna, you, you know, have your own business and you have guides who work, I imagine, in Italy. Um, you know, how are they faring these days? Well, they, you know, as I was saying before, because they are ahead of us, you know, they are kind of coming out. So right now, like my guides that usually do, let's say, 80% are dedicated to American tourists. Now they do a lot of Italian tours uh -huh. because now the, even the Italians, there is such a desire. After being locked down for two, two months, like people want to travel. And, uh, and I tell you, like my niece was in Venice last weekend. I, it was just so beautiful because there were not the crowds. So this, for, the, for who is in Europe, this is a wonderful time because things are getting better. Uh, I'm not saying that I don't want to make it rosy, you know, like you still need a mask, you still take precautions, but you can travel and you can be in a beautiful city on, 
you know, being in Venice without millions of people. And the same are for the Europeans. Um, I've heard, um, I have a, a, a young lady that works for me. She's from Lucca, and, which is in Tuscany. And her parents just rented a, a cottage, a villa that they had to a family from Germany. Mm -hmm. So in Europe, the Europeans are picking up. Right. They're starting, but I, again, you know, we started earlier and we are kind of coming out. We are not there yet. So, um, Alan, what are the airlines doing? I mean, as far as I, I agree with Nancy, it might be a good time for people to discover the United States. A lot of us have traveled more in Europe and there's certainly a lot to see here. So are the airlines working with not just resorts, but, you know, places that might be of interest to people where they may not have thought to go in the past. I mean, I don't know whether they're, you know, I mean, like they're all the national parks, which I think would be, you know, great places to explore. Um, what are the airlines doing with, you know, with trying to entice people to go to places as things open up? And you do need to unmute. <laughs> Yeah, well, a lot of the airlines, you know, they do work with hotels and uh, do different uh, hospitality packages. And I think that's exactly what's going to happen. I mean, people in the U.S. are going to start traveling to their own country now, which yeah. is uh, a benefit from this because the frequency to foreign destinations are just not there. And I think a lot of people are a little nervous to venture too far from home because um, I, I had friends that were stuck and could not get home in Europe or South America. So I think a lot of people are maybe a little skittish. They are anxious to get out and travel. And I think uh, you're gonna see a lot of Americans rediscover their own backyards. And- uh, So the airlines yeah. doing anything sort of unique to try to you know, encourage that that you know of? Uh, not that I'm aware of, you know, um, maybe in their, 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 some of their marketing, but uh, as far as what, uh, how it involves me, I'm not really sure, Amy. Okay, just curious, because I would think that would be, you know, some way for them to try to get some business going. Yeah. Alan, um, do you think the um, business travel, now that we're all using the Zoom, WebEx, or, you know, all sorts of video conferencing, do you think it is affected by, you know, like, like people don't need to travel, that actual question came from Sophie. Um, what do you envision? That. that that's the good point and i i think it, it i think because of the three big carriers american delta united me working for american they rely very heavily on that frequent flyer businessman travel traveler uh the high revenue ticket and i'm slowly seeing a few come back but not like as an example flights from dallas to philadelphia if I check my seating tablet, there would, at any given flight, be 50 frequent flyers. These are the high mileage travelers. Uh, after, when this all started, there were zero. Now there's maybe two or three. And I think because of Zoom, a lot of these businesses now will cut out corporate travel. I don't think all of them, but I think you will see a lot of them trim back on that. And that is not going to be good for the legacy carriers because they do rely on that ticket you know, that, that big ticket from the frequent travelers. So that, and then the, the loss of the international, which is a big money maker, it's gonna hurt the big carriers like American, Delta United, um, Southwest, Frontier, Spirit, they were always basically a domestic carrier. So they didn't have the frequent flyers and they didn't have the international exposure. So it, it's gonna be very hard for the big carriers unless those travelers come back. And I, I, I think they will, but I, I don't think they will to the extent that we used to have them because as an example, just Zoom, I mean, people realize now they don't have to be in the same office. They can do a Zoom call, you know, so. Social impact of the pandemic and the requirement. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that hurts the hotels too. I don't know if Nancy. I know, some of the hotels I stay at, Nancy has to jump. Yeah. Yeah. So, right, you're staying in hotels also. So, what, I mean, are they they're, really empty? <laughs> they're, they're, they're deserted. And the thing is, I take my own food with me because oh. a lot of the hotels you can't even get, the restaurants are not even open. Yeah. 
So they're slowly opening up, but uh, in the early stages, it was locked down and the hotels were a ghost town. They were deserted. Wow. Were the airlines doing testing of crew? I mean, no, they, no. Yeah. They, they give us masks and, and sanitizers and, uh, you know, the, the basics. But uh, there's been about two, I think the last count, 250 flight attendants that I know that have tested positive. And there's been a few dozen that have passed away and pilots. Uh, one one a colleague I I know I knew here in Philadelphia he, he died within days. Oh gosh. Uh, yeah. So I mean, and the, the, the airlines kind of keep it quiet. They don't really want you know the rest of the employees to know. So. Right. Uh, that's understandable. Yeah. 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 So, any other questions out there? Um, I just want to to say I do not know. I just saw on the panel that there is somebody from Portofino, Italy, that actually uh, we work together. She's uh, a guy that she has a company that does uh, travel in the Portofino in the Riviera. And, um, and I know she's always worried about her English, but I think her English is fine and it's over midnight. But I think it would be maybe nice to hear from someone that is really there. Uh, so I, I don't know, I just don't want to interfere. Would that be okay? It's uh, Francesca from uh, Discover My Portofino. Ciao, Francesca. <laughs> <laughs> Ciao, hello. <laughs> yeah, everyone is sleeping in the house, so I don't have to say too many words. But just to tell you, be positive, because we were worried as you are in the last weeks, but now everything is changing. Uh, we are reopening and we are back to life in the moment. We are very lucky to be in Italy in this moment because I traveled all around in these last weeks. Uh, there was nobody in the Cinque Terre, nobody in Portofino, nobody in Florence. So we are very lucky to be here. But to be honest, we wait for you. <laughs> uh, experience My Portofino works, works mostly with... Uh, United States and Australia. So this summer has gone for us, but we are trying to change our business to open up to the locals and to the Italians. It will not be easy because everyone is looking for something else, but we need to be ready for a change at the moment. And I think you should do the same, but everything will be back in some month perhaps or next year, but be positive. <laughs> Okay. okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> so, any other questions, comments? No. Uh, are you all ready to travel? I know, Giovanna, you're ready to get back to Italy. I'm ready to travel. I know that. <laughs> I'm, I'm as soon as I can, Francesca. I'm coming as soon <laughs> as. Uh, yeah, I'm waiting to hear when the decree. You know, to find out when is it that. Uh, and, uh, and of course, for people that travel a lot, it's a little bit easier, but, um, you know, life has to go on. But I mean, taking all of the precautions, like I'm not going to take risks, but at a certain point, um, the desire will come. Uh, one, one very specific question that I have, um, so friends of mine in Torino, are talking about how cafe life has changed so much for them with where they can't go sit at a bar and have a have an espresso they have to take it to go well now you can sit outside just recently now you can sit like at a cafe outdoor francesca is that true 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 no right now in the last week you can also stay inside wow. but with the one meter between the clients and you can also go to the restaurant outside or inside and sit down on a table also with friends. So we are truly coming back very quickly to but what the is number, the new normality. Yeah, the numbers are very different now in Europe than the United States. You know, now the cases are really uh, going down. So, or almost disappearing. You know, in Italy where the problem is still, unfortunately is where my mother, I'm from Milan, is more Milan, uh, but from Rome, southern Italy is completely COVID-free. 
and uh, there are very few cases now. So hopefully that is what will happen for us as well. You know, we are behind what happened in Europe. So, uh, and the important thing is that our numbers come down and that they do not come up again in the fall. So that is uh, obviously important. So we need a vaccine. What about that? <laughs> I think there's also the unpredictability. Um, one of our honorees, Ryan Pyle, who traveled the world, he is now uh, based in Dubai. He's been living there for quite a few years. And on his way to um, Dubai, he got stuck in Istanbul. And he's been there for the past almost two months. Oh, my God. Because they closed the borders and um, Dubai, whatever they said, yeah. nobody can come in. So, I mean, there is also that fact. I mean, you're on your way to visiting my friend Sophie to Belgium, well, how do I know I'm not going to be stuck in one country in Europe or, you know. And that can be unpredictable because, yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if there's a spike, if it comes back, I mean, countries are going to make you, you know, stay at home or uh, I, I don't know what. So I think, you know, it's a very, uh, it's a trying time for those of us who want to travel, you know. It really is, and it's a trying time for all the people who have been, I mean, hurt financially by it, you know, um, which is, you know, much more serious than me wanting to go to, you know, another country to just have a good time. So, you know, we can all hope it comes back. And, and I think that um, it'll be interesting to me to see, you know, what everybody starts offering us to come back. So I think that'll be... Uh, a fun sort of thing to find out, but we, we have to feel safe. People aren't, aren't going to travel unless they feel, you know, relatively safe, at least from this disease. Right. In um, the meantime, from the geographical societies, and I have to um, segue to what we do about travel. So we've been offering some international food feast um, so that we can also talk about that countries. Um, the, the chef or the owner of that restaurant's perspective about that culture, the cuisine, and also some of you who are familiar with Marco Polo events, those are our travel series. Um, we will have an online, a virtual Marco Polo presented by Tom Tauber. He is very well known. He is an amazing photographer. So those are coming up soon. So keep an eye on our website. We will be posting them. At least we'll get a little bit of fix of travel, you know, as, as much as we can. So um, any other questions, Jill, what would you like? Maybe you could just uh, un unmute everybody and, yeah, and let's do that yes. right now. And, um, and yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. I just want to say thank, thank you to Alan for participating and Nancy and Giovanna. So that was great that you, you gave us your time and I think gave us some, you know, some good information. But I think we are very much in a wait and see period here. Yeah, why don't you go ahead, Jack? You're already on mute. <laughs> no? Questions? Well, I have a question. Okay. So, because we can't go anywhere now, but when you can, where does everybody want to go next? <laughs> Actually, I'm permission. traveling to Sardinia this year, so oh. we are going to Italy, we can go and we can fly, apparently. Oh, so yeah. I'm very happy there will be few tourists, so <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> Alan, you said you want to go to, you're going to Rome. Yeah, Rome's one of my favorite cities. I want to go back there. God, I feel so good. Oh my oh, it's, 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 Okay, what, what oh, else? <laughs> I love Rome. My favorite. <laughs> Rome, Rome and Lisbon. Oh, I've not been to Lisbon. That's on my list. Well, and I should be in the Monte Argentario right now, but alas. Argentario, uh, <laughs> beautiful. Dee, this is Tom Tauber. Uh, I, hi, Tom. Hey, hi, everybody. Hi. Hi, Tom. <laughs> yeah, I mean, boy, we had to cancel, I think, four or five trips. Four trips. Yeah. Wow. No, it's fine. It's on with my, oh. Video. Okay. Where yeah, were we, we're sitting, we can we're see We're sitting that. at dinner, so 
and, 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 and that didn't come my hair. <laughs> Just getting so. wonderfully long. But I've never had hair it's like beautiful, this. It's beautiful, actually. It looks I mean, great. Look at this. Oh great. my Can we play a length there? <laughs> So uh, let me just uh, tell you about the uh, Marco Polo event. I think it's going to be July the 9th, is that right? Yes, and at 5 o'clock. At 5 o'clock, yes. At 5 o'clock. And it's going to be the great cities of the Persian <laughs> Gulf. Yes. We've been to uh, Doha, Dubai, and Abu Dhabi, and uh, Muscat in Oman. Yeah. And these are fascinating cities, uh, both very ultra-modern, of course, but also with ancient histories. and. Um, and um, I hope that you will join us, and it should be very interesting. When I really that? enjoyed uh, the uh, your discussions. We were listening very intently. Uh, it's a totally uh, it, we're we're living in a new world. I mean, we just don't know what's going to happen, especially if we have a second wave. Um, one of the reasons why we have decided not to travel anytime soon is the. Uh, uh, the the fear of getting stuck someplace, mm. uh, you know, with yeah. the virus, and uh, we have also decided not to travel independently of, of each other. I mean, for instance, I have my glider airplane in Nevada, and normally at this time of the year I would be going out there and I fly for two weeks, but if I fly out there and stay at some hotel and I don't know uh, what cleaning lady comes in and, and leaves the virus behind and I'm stuck in Reno, Nevada for in a hospital, it would be a total disaster. So, um, uh, I mean, as somebody uh, said uh, tonight, uh, we need a vaccine or at least a very good treatment, a very effective treatment that would probably help too. And uh, we have sort of started to uh, get together with some of our friends on a very, very limited basis. One or two, one or two people and uh, outside in the garden and uh, having a, you know, a, a nice little dinner. Uh, so slowly opening up on the isolation. But uh, I mean, I would I dream of being right now in Florence with nobody, <laughs> nobody there. I mean, it would be fantastic, you know, so. Okay. When we're all ready, we'll reach out to Giovanna, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. We all love Italy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Giovanna, you'll be up next, you know, that that's, that looks like, <laughs> yeah, you'll be our next presenter. Yeah. But so I, I know, Jack, you missed the date. So Tom's, uh, the Marco Polo that Tom is going to do is on July 9th. Right, five o'clock. We'll send us some notice on that. Yes, yes, yes. absolutely. And then uh, we are rescheduling the, um, the dinner with Judy Nee of Bology, the night in Taiwan. So that will be June uh, 28th, I yes. believe. Yes. Sunday, June 28th. So that, that uh, apologies on that. Um, we all got... Yeah. Glad she wasn't affected by it. Exactly. Yeah, she was. She was fine, but but she was in the in the thick of the um, the, the the lockdown zone. So there was, was scary. Nobody could get to her, or nobody could get out. So had to been scary. Yeah, I think one of the issues that's uh, for the travel industry is that it's, it's my feeling that the most people that are traveling are now in the over sixty, which is which hmm. are the at risk group and that's going to be hard to get cranked back up again hmm. that's true that's true i think that we have started uh as as i think tom said that uh having friends over uh sitting around uh in the backyard uh with with a glass of wine uh, and independent cheese boards if you will <laughs> <laughs> right, but uh, we're kind of dipping our toes into uh, social non-distancing, but we're doing it carefully. But we're also doing it uh, with respect to the folks that we know have been doing kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of hard to get on an airplane not knowing who's been doing that, particularly with somebody who refuses to wear a mask because whatever reason. There is no reason. Yeah. Yeah, that's a little scary. It's it's a little interesting that you can't make somebody wear a mask on the plane. I I don't. 
Yeah, like if they can make you use a mask in a supermarket yeah. or on a bus, I think if you go on SEPTA, you need to wear it. Right. So right. they should make it mandatory. Well, I think there is an issue. I don't know that SEPTA themselves are requiring it on a bus. They are now. They, are they, are they, now. they weren't earlier, but they are now. They had a problem when they had tried to enforce and they hauled someone off of us and got into a lot of trouble, but they changed it uh, about a week ago and it's yeah. back in force. You know, in Belgium, we cannot get on the bus without a mask. You know, my sister still lives in Austria. My sister still lives in Austria, where I'm from, and she tells me that at every at the entrance to every, any store, every store, there are masks and gloves and hand sanitizer everywhere, and you cannot yeah. walk into a into a store without having a mask. Oh, no, it is. And and Austria has had very very low uh, numbers, um, and uh, they've done very very well as a result of it. And uh, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I don't, I don't know what it is. I mean, you know, Americans are individualists and they hate to be told by the government what to do. I think that's the problem. And uh, and even the, uh, I think the admonition that you don't do it for yourself, but you do it for somebody else, even that doesn't seem to be sinking in in, in, in certain places among certain populations and that's a, that's unfortunate i mean if we cannot uh, in the absence of a vaccine uh, or a good treatment if we cannot bring these numbers down in the summer uh, to the uh, that people feel comfortable sitting out to us going to restaurants i mean the economy is going to be severely damaged over the long run i mean so yeah Okay, well, on that note. <laughs> <laughs> on a negative note. Let's all wear masks. Let's all wear masks. I will <laughs> say, as someone Bill who. D, thank you for starting this out. Thank you. I hope to be able as to someone who, who owns three <laughs> restaurants, I think it's looking up. But Thanks, D. Thanks, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Ta ta, as it were. To all of you. Ciao. Bye. 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 Bye.